Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says his country faces a new kind of terrorism. Civilians have been attacked by knives, rockets and firebombs. And while methods have changed, the hatred behind them has not. This new kind of terrorism is just the latest in a long history of attacks against the Jews. Israel is the most fought after piece of real estate in the world. Both Jews and Arabs alike claim to be the rightful owners, and countless lives have been lost in the battle to obtain it. Rabbi Jonathan Bernis, president and CEO of Jewish Voice Ministries International, has spent decades investigating this conflict. He believes it's vital to understand Israel's history and to be informed of what is unfolding in the Middle East. In his book, A Lasting Peace, Rabbi Bernis explains these complex historical and spiritual issues clearly, showing that peace is attainable and the role we all play in establishing it. Jonathan Bernis is here with us now, and we welcome you back to it's the so 700. It's good to be back. Club. Thank it's you, Terry. It's wonderful to have you back. You are a Messianic Jew, and you make it clear at the outset of your book that Palestinians are victims too. How so? Well, absolutely. Uh, and there's far too little press about the Palestinians, the, the Christian community, yeah. that suffered under ha the hands of the Islamic leadership. And we need to uh, we need to get more involved mm -hmm. as Christians. These are, these are our brothers and sisters. The BDS movement, talk to me a little about that because it's in the news. We hear about it over and over and over again. What's behind that? Yeah, uh, boycott, divestment, sanctions to try to uh, cripple Israel economically. But I think more importantly, it's, it, it is that Christians have to know that there is a very targeted, systematic, strategic effort to turn the hearts of college students, of university students, Christians, those that were raised in solid Christians' home, in solid Christian homes against Israel and the Jewish people and its propaganda. Terry, one of the things I talk about in the book, the basis of the book is this is a spiritual conflict. It's not political. It's spiritual at its root, and it's very deep. And this is a satanic effort, just bottom line. It's a satanic effort to eradicate Israel and the Jewish people, something that uh, has been uh, in the history, in our history as uh, a Jewish community for 2,000 years since uh, Christ came in the name of Christ, but going all the way back to Abraham. But you mentioned history, but and you talk about the younger generation. Part of the problem is history is not being honestly portrayed to them. I mean, the numbers that you spoke of in the book of people who who don't believe that the Holocaust happened is it's startling. Shocking. It's shocking. The bigger the lie toward, told more often, uh, yeah. the more people believe it. And that's why I wrote the book. I want people to know the truth. People need, Christians need to look through a biblical lens to understand this. I, I say this all the time. It's not that God loves the Jewish people more than the Arabs. He doesn't love Israelis more than Palestinians, but he decreed in his word that, there, that he would raise up a land and a people to bless the world and give them a land that would be an everlasting possession. And it's part of his redemptive plan for mankind. I love the fact that you, you went back in history and back in scripture to look at the origin of all of this, because a lot of people don't know what that is. Right. Talk a little about the beginnings of the Arab-Israeli conflict. It is very, very old, and that's why it's so complex. It goes all the way back to Genesis 16 with Ishmael and Isaac and the prophecy that Ishmael will uh, be against his brother yeah. and, ag and against, against all. And th this has been realized through the rise of Islamic fundamentalism. And uh, there is no solution of man to bring peace, but God has a peace plan and it will work. And it's not a document, it's not an accord, it's a person. Well, it's always a little confusing to me. I've been to Israel a number of times. I've loved every opportunity I've had to go, but Arab Israelis live with full rights in Israel. So why is there so much animosity toward the Jewish state? I, again, spiritual at its root, there, there's, there's only a one state solution ultimately, and it's not a Jewish state. It's the destruction of the Jewish state. And this has been, this has been inbred into the Palestinian people since they were children. And it's a doctrine of hate and death. And it, 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 it's a spiritual issue at its root. And that's why I'm, I call on Christians in the book to stand in the gap, yeah. to pray, to proclaim. We can make a difference because we have the truth. 
Well, Israel is surrounded by enemies and, and by nations that all have military operations. What's the future? What do you see happening? Well, you also have the UN that is terribly biased against Israel. Uh, the solution is the Prince of Peace. Yeah. And I encourage people on, on my program, Psalm 122, 6, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. If you understand the Hebrew peace, shalom, it's to bring to completion God's plan for a land and a people. And when we stand in the gap, when we proclaim our faith, when we reach out to Jew and Arab, Israeli and Palestinian with the good news, there's a transformation that takes place. And I've watched in Israel, Terry, God's peace plan working with Jews and Arabs coming together, embracing each other because they have a relationship with Jesus, their Messiah. So having stated that, do you feel like a lasting peace is possible? Absolutely, and as promised in God's word, there yeah. will be peace. But again, it's not going to be through human endeavor. It's going to be uh, a person, the person of Jesus Christ coming into the hearts of Jew and Arab alike. And ultimately, Jesus will rule and reign from Jerusalem. And that's why it's the most contested land in the world. It's the hottest, uh, it's the hotbed of conflict. Uh, it's, it's the epicenter of world attention, ultimately. Well, such a fascinating history. As I was reading your book, I couldn't help but think of Pat Boone's song in the movie Exodus, This Land is Mine. God gave this land to me. And I just wonder what it will take for the Arab community to understand that, that having what God gave you doesn't mean they can't have what God intends for Absolutely. them. Absolutely. There has to be a transformation ultimately. And that transformation takes place in a person's heart. Yeah. And that, that comes through the Spirit of God, the, the, the supernatural mm -hmm. transforming power of God. But we can proclaim and pray and yes. God hears and answers. So is that what you would say to believers who are watching right now? I mean, that, what is our mandate in this hour that we live in? I think to understand what's going on and, and to cut through all the propaganda, understand how to pray, mm -hmm. why it's so important that we pray, why we have to make our voices known. Yeah. But it begins with understanding that this is on the heart of God. And if it matters to God, it has to matter to us. And in the day that we live in, it's central to almost everything. It is. <laughs> yeah. Jonathan, thank you so much Great to be uh, for your insight. It's wonderful. Thanks. For more on this topic, check out Jonathan's book. It's called A Lasting Peace. And don't just take my word for it. The book features a blurb from Gordon saying, to understand today's headlines, you need to read this. Well, once again, get your copy, A Lasting Peace. It's available in stores nationwide.